G'day everyone, welcome to this first video which is um, all about Autodesk Inventor and we're going to be starting off with some basic sketching in this video, working from the Gasket 1-2 sheet from Daymap. To start off with, you can see I'm in my Inventor, Autodesk Inventor screen here um, and it's my main home screen, you can see that just down here, my home. And on my home screen here, I've got a few different things going on. I've got my ribbon up the top here, which gives me some basic, you know, open, new, those sorts of things. Uh, I've got my new box here where I can start parts, assemblies, drawings, or even presentations. Um, I can see where it's taking my files from, so my projects area. All right, and down the bottom here, my recent documents. So that could be parts, drawings in my case, and you could have also assemblies or presentations in here. So to start off with uh, this video, we're just going to open a new part. And in this new part, we're going to start a new 2D sketch because that's where we're working at the moment. So I'm going to click up here in the ribbon on the 2D sketch button. And I need to select a new plane. So I'm just going to pick, pick in this case, the XY plane. You can see straight away, I've come into the XY axis with my origin point in the middle. So X across the horizontal, Y going top to bottom. And we're going to go ahead and start drawing gasket one. So to start with, I can see that I've got a major square for that gasket. I think with this square, I'm going to go ahead and draw it with lines to start with. So I'm going to click on my line tool, and you can see I get a little crosshair there. And I'm going to start on my origin point. So clicking on my origin point, I'm going to go out any distance, doesn't matter too much at this point in time. Click again, you can see it takes me straight into another line. Click again, so I've got two lines three lines, and four lines. So I'm back at the origin point now. At this point here, I need to start putting some dimensions on. Now I could go ahead and draw the rest of the drawing and then add dimensions in. Sometimes we can do that. In this case, it's going to confuse things. So we'll start off with this outer square. I'm just going to right click now to get out of my line tool and click OK there. So there's a couple of different ways I can get out of tools. Firstly, let's go to the dimension tool because we need to start putting some dimensions on the drawing. So we'll just click on that one there. And you see it's lit up blue on the ribbon there, so it shows I'm in the tool. I'm going to start with my left hand line here. I need to make this 80 millimeters in length. So I'm going to hit keyboard, type that in, hit in. See there, I've zoomed out a little bit. Now I can zoom back in and see everything up on the navigator up the top here. Now I can see the entirety of the drawing. Now I've got my dimension tool still selected. I need to give that a dimension as well, so 80 millimeters again. And you can see the entire square there. So I'm just going to click the front button again. Just want to get it all on my. Now at this point here, I just want to talk briefly about the constraints on this box alone. So I'm going to grab the show constraints tool. Just here. I'm going to select that entire sketch. Now you can see so far there aren't many constraints on here. I've got perpendicular constraint on my corners, which is keeping it all together. So all these lines have to be perpendicular. That's what that says. Um, but I'd say right now, if I um, try to move things, I possibly could. Um, so to exit out of my show constraints tool again, I can right click and I can go either OK or escape. I'm going to hit OK in this case. And just looking down on the bottom toolbar here, I can see fully constrained is lit up. So this drawing at the moment is fully constrained. Now, the next part of this drawing that I'm going to add in are the inner squares. So I've got four squares in the four corners of this gasket. So this time I'm going to use the rectangle tool from the create palette here. So I click on that rectangle tool. I'm going to draw one square in this corner. You know, it may not be an exact square yet, but that doesn't matter too much. Another one down in this corner. One up here. Again, not worrying too much about whether these are accurate squares or not. We can adjust that later. They may not even line up with each other at this point, and that's fine. So you can see there, I've got my four squares in there, and I do need a rectangle in the middle, so we might as well add that in now. So there we go. Now it's starting to look something like the PDF drawing. Now what I'll do now is just give it a right click and click OK, so I'm out of my rectangle tool. And you can see you can see all the different constraints that have come up on these rectangles. We've got parallel constraints, horizontal constraints, and perpendicular constraints which keep those rectangles all perfect. Alright, 
At this point, I need to start putting some dimensions on here and constraining where these parts of my drawing are. Because if I look down the bottom here, all of a sudden I have 12 dimensions needed on this drawing. Now, there's a few different ways I can do this. I could go ahead and use my dimension tool to dimension every single line on these squares. All right? And as they're parallel, it will dimension the one opposite it. Another way I can do it is to dimension one of my squares and then use the equal constraint tool to keep the other squares related to it all the same. That way, if I happen to decide that I want to change the shape of those squares, I could also do that. To start off with, what I think I'll do is I'll use the dimension tool to dimension my bottom left square here. So I'm going to add in the dimensions for this one. So we'll just go back out of that tool there. And click on dimension again. I'm going to select a line on that square. We may actually, what you're noticing here, so I've selected that line and all of a sudden it's telling it like it's not giving me the option to add a dimension in there. So what I probably need to do, rather than pick the entire line on the side there, I'm going to have to pick a dimension between two points. So let's select the dimension tool again. I'm going to hover over, I'm going to select that point there and the upper point there. And all of a sudden you can see I do have a dimension now. So let's click that one in. And from the drawing, I know that it's 15 millimeters tall, this square. So I'm going to type that in and click enter. So I've got the height of this square now. I'm going to go ahead and add in the width of it as well. So clicking back on the dimension tool, clicking on the corner points of my square, and adding my 15 millimeters in. As you can see, I've dropped a couple of dimensions needed now. I'm down to 10 dimensions needed on this. I've got some options here. I can go ahead and I can do that same thing to all four of these, or I can use the equal constraint tool. In this case, I'd like to use the equal to make things easy for me in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. I'm going to click on the side of that one. I'm going to go up to the one above it. And you can see that shifted things for this one as well. Now, I may do that on other parts of it, I'm not sure, let's find out. So let's click on the bottom part there. Okay, something all of a sudden there is saying this will over constrain the sketch. So for some reason, it's actually gone and put that constraint in for me already. So let's leave it as it is. Let's go ahead and let's make this side equal to the one on this drawing over this square over here. There we go, now they're equal. And I'm gonna try that with the bottom of that square as well. So. Now what's happening is they all look pretty close, although this one doesn't look quite right, so we're going to add in the width from here up to this one using that constraint again. And we'll do one more time just to make sure that this one is the correct height. And again, it's saying this will over constrain sketch, so we know that that top, right, top right-hand square is fine. So we're going to hit cancel there. Now, all my squares now look the same, and I'm down to six dimensions needed. That's all. Now, the reason we're after a fully constrained drawing is so that we can't move any part of that drawing. And it also makes a difference later on if we go to uh, do some 3D modeling from this sketch. Now, if we don't have a fully constrained sketch, that could cause issues later. All right, looking at the middle rectangle here, I haven't put any dimensions or constraints on that yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pick the dimension tool now, again. And I'm just gonna give it a width for, to start with. So I'll pick on, the two corners and you can see all of a sudden it's gone and picked up the bottom and the top there and it's not quite working the way it needs. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to go back into that dimension tool and I'm going to pick those two corners. That's not letting me straight over, which is a bit odd. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, let's give me the top to bottom. We don't want that. Let's hit cancel. Let's try it again. Pick that side and that side. There we go. Now I can pop it in there. So see, there's another different way to dimension there in, where I, in which I pick two sides of the rectangle. Type in my dimension of 20, hitting enter on my keyboard, and there we go. I have my rectangle in the middle at the correct width. Now, I've given these mostly the correct sizes, but they're not in the correct positions yet. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So again, using my dimension tool, I'm going to start by placing these squares the correct distance from the outer bounding box. So I'm going to click that outer bounding box of this one here. And you see at the moment it says five millimeters or just over five. I'm going to change in. Enter. And you can see that's moved the ones that were next to it down as well. So 
somehow um, we've got some constraints in there which keep those at the same distance. I'm going to go ahead and do that on this, these bottom parts as well. So clicking on the bottom of the outer square and that square there. And we'll well, and you see as I go, I'm starting to get a lot of purple lines and less green lines. Now what that tells us is that as we go, if we start to see less green lines, it means that we are dimensioning them. And you can see down the bottom right here, it shows I only need three dimensions. Now. Let's add some of those in. Now the first one I'm going to add in uh, is between these outer squares and the outer sides, which is five millimeters. So I'll go ahead and add that one in here. So I'm just going to pick that outer left hand side and that inner square. I'm going to make that five millimeters. Both of those in. I'm going to do the same on the right hand side. You can see those two. So let's make it well. Okay, those two right hand squares are now fully constrained as well. And the very last constraint we need to put in is the distance from the side of this rectangle from either the right hand or the left hand side. And that will pull it into the correct position. We know that the width will stay the same. In. So looking at my sketch here, which I'm working from, we have a distance 30 millimeters in from the right hand edge. So I'm have it. Go ahead and add that one in now. So click on that right hand side right left hand side of the rectangle there and you can see it's almost on 30 just click one more time i'm going to type in that dimension so 30 and enter and we now have a fully constrained sketch so that's how we go about just drawing a basic sketch sketch there with a couple of different tools the line tool and the square tool we also added in some different constraints there so we added in some equal constraints for our different squares we also added in um, some constraints as far as our dimensions I'll right click out, I'm going to exit my tool now, click OK. And let's just have a look at absolutely all the constraints that we can see on the sketch now. So I'm going to grab my Show Constraints tool again, select the entire sketch, and you can see they're all lit up there. So we've got lots of different ones on here. We have perpendicular constraints between different parts. We have equal constraints that are keeping different parts of our sketch equal to each other. Different parallel constraints. We have some horizontal constraints which keep our squares horizontal to the uh, x-axis of our sketch plane and we can see that we now have a fully constrained, ske constrained sketch there. Don't forget to save your sketch when you're done. Click the finish sketch button first which is up on the ribbon here. That will take us back out to see the sketch there and you can see my navy cube's gone onto a corner there. I might just click that corner so I can bring it into view. There we go. You can see the final sketch there with all its dimensions. And remember to save that off to your student drive. Thanks for watching.